So first things first, how are you? I'm doing okay. Yeah, uh, not bad. That's good to hear. Now, where I want to start is uh, you did an interview with us. I think it was back in 2006. And you talked about the misuse of technology. And I mean, that's already a, a, some time ago. And, and could, could even you predict where it all has gone in terms of technology and how we uh, utilize it? Uh, I'm just an observer. Uh, I uh, I don't think anybody could have predicted. I mean, isn't it like one of the, you know, in terms of all the different, you know, the different ages and the different eras that we've gone through, it's just been the most rapid kind of mind blowing, uh, you know, hyper speed. Um, yeah, I mean, it's especially I consider myself a pretty simple minded individual, so. For someone like me, it's just, you know, it's, 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 it's hard to grasp. All you can do is just sort of like sit back on the sidelines and, and uh, just sort of shake your head in disbelief and, uh, you know, use it, use it for, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think my saving grace is that, you know, I don't see it as like this, I don't see it as a, you know, a big savior or, or, an, or an end all to anything. It's just, it's just another tool, you know, for, for more enlightenment and, and more, uh, yeah, just problem solving. So, uh, I, I so obviously people are going to abuse it. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's going to be really interesting what happens with AI and all that, all of that. Uh, but you mentioned kind of using it as a tool. So have you over the years, when it comes to either uh, producing music or anything, uh, has your relationship with te technology changed over the years? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like I'm really fortunate to have been able to experience just enough of the analog world. Mm. Um, and that's, I mean, I, I say that not even, you know, specifically with music, it's just, you know, with books and movies and, and uh, it's, you know, I get, I get the opportunity to kind of look in on, on, uh, I have access to, to, uh, to kids, teenagers mm. at this point from friends and, and, and from my own situation that I'm in. And, uh, it's becoming a little disturbing to me how, how sort of hands off they are mm. <laughs> as far as reading and drawing <laughs> and just, you know, just like things that you can working with your hands, and uh, I don't know. I, for me, it was it was. I love I love the idea of uh, I loved the idea and still love the idea of a kind of a hybrid setup, you know, where I'm using a lot of the uh, the ideals and a lot of the hands-on, you know, elements of playing instruments and you know, kind of getting your hands dirty with equipment. And, but then also, you know, I love editing. I love the, I love the digital realm too. You know, I can spend, you know, my, my body actually won't even, it starts to give out before my brain does. You know, I, I actually love sitting for, you know, and doing extensive editing, but at some point I just become too stiff. <laughs> I just, <laughs> my, my ears start giving out on me. My eyes start, you know, getting really uh, fatigued and, but uh, yeah, I love, I, I, I was, I was pretty excited to embrace the digital, you know, the newness of the digital and the, and the kind of the old, more traditional aspects of, of analog and songwriting and recording and stuff. You mentioned the uh, editing and what I find interesting, am I right in saying that this is kind of what got you going uh, when you were a kid, where you started editing and recording songs just on tapes and, and just, uh, yeah, trying to make something uh, by recording and editing all those uh, songs. I, I just, I, I remember being really fascinated by, so it wasn't just songs, but okay. it was, I, I remember being really kind of uh, perplexed by, by why production and why, why, 
certain decisions having been made can affect the feel of a song. And, mm. and then I just, and then I became not so, not so content with just sitting and listening to it. Like I wanted to, and it's, it's weird. I like, I know people who are like this with mechanical things. They want to take things apart and see how they work. And it's like, I've never really been like that with electronics and stuff. Like I, I kind of just want the thing to work <laughs> and I just want to use it as a tool. But I, I was always like that with music. Like I was, right. I was just like, what, why, like, why is it doing this to me? And, and then I would kind of, I would trace it back to certain sounds that got introduced into certain moments in a song. And then, you know, and then I, I became interested in, you know, trying that myself. And then, you know, it, it started very modestly, you know, with, you know, with the, with the modest amount of gear that I had, that I had assembled. And I would, you know, once, once I decided to start making songs and making recordings, like I was just as, interested in the production side of it as I was the songwriting side of it. So I was kind of learning too simultaneously at the same time. And it, I didn't really see it as extra work because I feel like the two things really complement each other. Like, like very much like you can have a certain song that's saying a certain something. And man, if you add the right elements to it, it, it could just like take it to this whole other next level that you could never have imagined if, if you, if you hadn't had, production in mind as well is your vision and especially as you've gotten older and more more experienced in what you do has your vision always been very clear of what you wanted uh to make or, or was it always like this blurry picture that you had to move closer to and closer to kind of incrementally yeah i mean it's it depends i mean sometimes you know i'll have a pretty clear you know almost like you know almost almost like the song doesn't exist yet, but, but you have a trailer for it sure. and you're like, there it is. And so it's like the quest becomes sort of ex expanding that trailer and expounding uh, and, uh, and just, um, and then sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just a sentiment. Sometimes you just have one line and you're just like, all right, well, what kind of music would go good with the feeling behind this line. And so you're just, you're trying to kind of bolster this, this, you know, and I, and I, I, that's, that's something that I've gotten a lot out of country music. They used to mm -hmm. country music was really good about like the, like the song title would just be like this mm -hmm. one line and that says everything. You're just like, Oh my God, that's such a great line. It's probably something that somebody heard in a bar or overheard, you know, somebody talking and he just like jotted it down mm -hmm. on, a, on a drink napkin and uh and you build a whole song around that and then it just becomes you know what instrumentation is going to support that and it's, so that ends up being kind of a fun exercise when you're just building the thing out of nothing but you do have this clear you know you do have this one phrase perhaps or like this one line that says a lot and just and just the line itself and then you just build this whole thing around it that's that's cool too and then I'm not sure if you have th these kinds of um, ideas about a whole about a whole album, but was there a, a quote unquote trailer for for what Blue Wave would become? Did you have anything in mind? Because you mentioned country, what was that kind of the, the trigger for you in in terms of this album? Yeah, I mean, I was definitely, I had kind of, and I can't say I've ever done this before, probably ever. It's just like I'd sort of envision like an uh i know that this almost sounds a little uh <clears throat> a little uppity but <laughs> like i i kind of imagine like this new genre but it's also one of those things where you know you like i thought i heard something in a piece of music so uh, so that sent me on this this quest to find all this other types of music that fell under the category of that music that I thought I heard and I couldn't find it. So I was just mm. like, fuck it. I'm just going to make it myself, you know, um, uh, which is great, you know, total, you know, DIY uh, approach, but I literally couldn't, I, I tried finding in other versions of what I thought I heard in my head by hearing the song on the radio and I couldn't. So I was just like, 
that kind of set me on this path of just doing it myself. And when I was working throughout the course of working on the album, I just had guidelines for myself. You know, I just, I was just like, I knew what the instrumentation should be. So that was like, that kind of put me in a certain, you know, I had certain parameters to work with there, but then I was also, you know, I kept telling myself, keep it sweet, you know, and keep the, keep the, keep the lyrics light, you know, not, you know, don't sound like you're trying to get all intellectual and, and, you know, wordy gymnastics, uh, you know, keep it real simple, keep it light and keep it sweet. And, um, and with the time signatures that I had in mind too, which mostly were waltzes, slower, mm. kind of like waltzing time signatures. I mean, just if I was just working with those parameters alone, and that's already going to put myself, it's going to put me somewhere, you know, with the instrumentation. I knew it was going to be heavy with pedal steel. And uh, I knew it was going to be lots of synthesizer, like dense kind of pads. So I was just like, all right, we'll just, we'll, we'll start off with that and then just see where, see where that brings us and then just kind of go from there. Just very quickly before we go into it a little bit more deeper, uh, when you, When you start a project like this, and you kind of, as you mentioned, all the all the elements that that come into play, and is it a very how should I describe it? Are, are you looking forward to the process? Because I, as you mentioned, you do a lot or practically everything yourself, and looking forward to that that uh, task in a in a sense. Uh, do you look forward to it? Is it is it something arduous that, uh, that you have to go through to get to the end result? How do you see that process? I mean, I definitely don't look forward to it all the time. There's, mm. I have, to, I have to because I do it the way I do it. It's I have to become a taskmaster, mm. and I have to kind of lay out what my working plan is going to be. Some tasks are funner than others. Some of them are just, you know, not fun at all. Like comping vocals, especially if, you know, if it's a, there's a song that has like lots and lots of vocals on it, you know, and when I'm saying comping vocals, I'm also editing vocals. It's like removing all the artifact and the, and the harshness and, and just getting things that kind of, you know, exist smoothly. It's like, there's it's a it's an unsung <laughs> task of making things sound effortless like like especially in the digital realm it's like you work really hard by making things sound like they didn't like they just sort of like came together like really easily right. uh which is a weird paradox but then i think the funner days the funner tasks are is when uh the song is right on the edge of working, but it just needs, it, it needs more layering. <laughs> it mm. needs more, more, uh, more things just kind of being gooped upon it. And I don't quite know what this, you know, what the, a lot of times, I don't know. I, I like, I like adding lots of synths and 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 i take a lot of care in layering them in such a way to where it doesn't sound like there's much happening but there's probably like you know there can be five or six different mm -hmm. ones happening and they're all filling little spaces <clears throat> you know it's not just like one pad that just has like this you know that that is taking care of all the frequencies across the spectrum it's like i'm usually kind of adding them all in and it's the thing that's interesting to me is especially when you're working on songs in earlier stages is that like the lazy, the lazy part of me always wants to say, all right, we're done. Great. Okay. We're done. <laughs> like, like, and why, like, I don't even know why that exists. Like I'm, I'm not looking forward to adding more and more shit, but like, but I just, I just want the thing done. There's something about, uh, <laughs> And then I'll add more stuff and then I'll just go, oh my God, I can't believe I thought this was going to be done because I just added this one other little thing and now it's so much better. And so, but then that also begs to question, you know, it's just like this could go on forever. So that sure. it does become a game at, at, at kind of knowing when, 
when enough is enough. And there's, I mean, that's just sort of like, nobody knows the answer to that. And that's it's actually more of a gut feeling, right? It's a big debatable uh, subject uh, in, in the recording world. It's just when to say when, especially with mixing. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a gut thing over, overall and at some point it's just you know you just have to you know what i'm done this is just let's just it's walk beca- yeah it's becoming a, be- a bit nonsensical we have to uh yeah finish something because otherwise you, you can't get to the, the next thing that you want to do as well yeah it's just keep- and it's also i mean that that is probably where i'm a bit grateful you know that i don't have a multitude of people that i'm working with mm. I, I would imagine situations like that where everyone's trying to get theirs and everyone's trying to like i mean it's it's tough enough just obsessing over something yourself but but then if i had to bring in like two or three other people who are doing that same level of obsessing and also just like wanting to get those extra next little things in and and things aren't i feel like i'm at least with me working myself or by myself on my own music like like i am there's one person who's serving one song mm. and that that adds a bit of clarity and and i and there's no ego there's no there's no nothing it's just like i i need to make the song exactly what the song wants to be and that's that that is probably that is probably a much less cluttered form of working than right. than i would and, you know, you know, a multitude of people with a multitude of different intentions and, and a multitude of egos and, and, you know, not quite knowing, you know, you know, why these new suggestions are coming in or if it's, if this is even about serving the song. And, right. And, you mentioned all the, all the layering that you do. And, and on this album, uh, the pedal steel features quite prominently. Um, how familiar were, were you with playing uh, pedal steel? Oh God, I didn't play it. Uh, there was, there's, I'm, I'm so intimidated and like okay. so, so in awe of that instrument. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> I knew if I was going to do, you know, the, the sound of the pedal steel, I knew if I was going to do that any justice and somebody who knew what they were doing was going to mm-hmm. have to play it. So I did uh, through a friend of mine, I, I got turned on to this fellow by the name of Mac, Max Hart. And I guess he had played on, I don't know. He's, he's an engineer. He's a producer. He's a, he's a composer himself. Uh, he plays piano and, and a Hammond B3 organ, but he also happens to play the pedal steel. And uh, yeah, I just, I met him and got along great with him. And we spent a whole day in a studio here. Um, doing about well we did we did a couple of tracks remotely and then i realized i feel like they went good but i i feel like in order to really make the best connection we needed to be in a room together Mm. i need you know needed to have discussions about the songs and and just like a lot of you know quick communication back and forth and it was like, that was like the best decision I could have made. We we got a lot of work done in one day, and he was was pretty effortless. And, uh, yeah, that's great to hear. Now, the last thing I kind of want to delve into is the the thematic side of the album. You you mentioned uh, you wanted to keep the songs light. Um, were there certain things that you even beforehand knew you wanted to say on this album, or or how did you kind of navigate uh yeah the the lyrics or the thematic elements of this album well you you know i remember when i when i first when i first uh decided to settle settle in and start finding out what the what the material of this album was going to be i was basically just going through phone songs i was trying to find the most well i mean First thing I was doing was seeing what waltzes I had accumulated. Mm. For, for, for some reason, you know, three, four, and six, eight is like a really natural kind of time signature for me. It's a nice, it's just you know, sitting around the house, just you know, kind of goofing off. It's uh, so over the years, I've I've I have a lot of three, four, and six, eight time signatures that exist, 
So I was looking for kind of like the prettiest, like, like the nicest sounding chord combinations. And if I was lucky, you know, some, some like sweet melodies that existed over those as well. So I was just trying to accumulate as many of those as I could. And then once I realized that I had a halfway decent, like I was going for like memorable melodies mm. and nice sounding chords. So, and even the songs that weren't waltzes, you know, I was just, it was more about kind of like rich chord sequences and memorable melodies. <clears throat> and then just trying to simplify those as much as I could with that instrumentation that I was talking about, you know, just enough bluegrassy sounding stuff mm. and just a kind of dense um, uh, synthesizer. But, you know, in order for it to work, you know, I kind of have like this weird this weird there's the rebellious streak in me if something is sounding too country then i'll try to like modernize it a bit either with the instrumentation or with the lyrical content and if something is sounding too kind of sappy maybe i'll try to lighten it up with you know some more lighthearted. like i just try not to kind of fall into the obvious approach i think mm -hmm. with a lot of things but um and that's just, you know, that, that is like the, that's like the art part. That's like the, that's like the, you know, countering this with that and the compositional thing. Cause I think at the end of the day, I'm always trying to achieve some sort of balance. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it just so happens that the majority of the majority of the lyrics, and it was probably based on the music that I chose a majority of the words and the lyrics was just kind of just like, I don't know. It's just like shitty relationship stuff that didn't work out kind of, <laughs> which I would hate to think that that's just like this easy default mode for me to go into. But uh, I just, I don't know that uh, I don't, I don't even know if that's what the album is all about. Uh, <laughs> It's interesting that you say that because when I listen to the album and if, if you, it feels very warm in a sense. So it, it doesn't feel like it's about, uh, yeah, relationships that didn't work out. And, and yeah, it I mean, like if anything, it... it's just reflection. You know, there's, there's something mm -hmm. about, there's something about the, the feeling of reflection and maybe and reflection, even reflecting on something sad can mean that, you know, you, you look back on something and maybe it's the way you, handled yourself and maybe you didn't always handle yourself well throughout a trying period but maybe you did maybe you did the right thing and and you feel better about yourself and even that can have a sound you know of just being sure. being uh at peace you know with certain decisions that you've made you know that can have a sound i think i, I definitely do a lot of reflecting i'm definitely a very nostalgic person okay. uh and and that i mean that even starts to, you know, I could, I could imagine what the sound of that sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have one last question before I let you go then, because when you mentioned you're quite a nostalgic person and in that uh, interview of about 17 years ago that you did with us, you also went through the albums um, that you've made uh, up until that point. You were actually quite critical, if I remember correctly, about some of the, music that you made and now sure. over time the, the, because you did the reissues and they, uh, um, the uh, after that quickly look at it um, oh the, the the piano edition of uh, Software Slab you, you went through the, it was quite, quite uh, a couple of years of reminiscing I suppose about uh, the music that yeah. you've made plenty has of reminiscing <laughs> have you has, has your uh, view of some of those albums or some of the music that you've made changed over the years? Uh, I don't. Well, I guess I would have to have a a very a very specific or deliberate thing that I thought about them to mm. begin. With in order for them to change. I've always been confused about, you know, I'll get done making something and I don't know what I made. Like, I'm just mm. like, all right, 
And that actually, that's very frustrating because you would almost like, if you could have a dream about the best version of being a songwriter or producer or engineer, I mean, it wouldn't be that it would, it would be like, I'm making this thing and it's so awesome. And, and this is what it sounds like. And, and I've, I've accomplished my goal. Hell yeah. Life is great. You know, but I usually get done. I'm just like, ah, well, okay, I'm done. And I don't know what I made. Uh, and, uh, I just, uh, I usually at the, if I'm checking boxes, like the, my main objective is to make, just make sure that it's going to be something that I can be proud of or something I'm not going to be embarrassed by. Um, in my earliest, earliest, earliest recordings, you know, I can't say that. And, and perhaps that's where I learned that. I'm just like, all right, from this day on, you know, I'm going to quit making an ass of myself and uh, start making things that I can stand behind and be proud of. So at this point, that's definitely, I think I've done a pretty good job with my, with my catalog and my, you know, what, what the world knows of as granddaddy at this point. So there's no reason to start fucking it up right now. I may as well, <laughs> <laughs> I may as well, you know, stay on this path and just keep making stuff that I can be proud of, you know, five, 10 years down the road. So you see this because that was kind of, uh, you see yourself making records basically till the wheels fall off. Yes, and I've contemplated. Well, I mean, and and that and might not necessarily releasing them, uh, but even if it's just for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I I still, I still get that wide-eyed, kind of uh, naive excitement that comes along with recording. Playing, you record something and you play it back, and it's just like that's never going to go away. It's kind of you get a little high from it, and it's a uh, mm. especially once you start you know stacking all those instruments together and start creating this thing that you could not have imagined. That's, that's a, uh, I think there's, there's worse ways of spending your downtime. <laughs> Jason, may I thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me? Yeah. Yeah. You bet. Thanks for, thanks for accommodating me. <laughs>